is on how you are going to find God. With a willing mind. He said, for the Lord searched all hearts and understandeth all the imagination of thought. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off. That's a strong word that left. And which God is telling you. Hallelujah. And so look at verse 11 now. You now see that everything we are talking about Solomon. Somebody received it and gave it to him. Look at verse 11. Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern. Somebody say pattern. The pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries. You know, you can read that. You can see that David gave to Solomon. Do you understand that? Huh? And then, when you go to verse 19, you can now begin to see the secret. Huh? You can begin to see the secret. How the thing came is in the counsel he gave his son. He said, you must know the God of my father. There's, there's a knowing that David knew God. Huh? Now because David sought him with a willing, with a pure heart and then with a willing mind. And then he found him. You see, somebody was leading prayer. You know, we did a section in the afternoon and then this evening is that grace was leading prayer concerning children. And that's a serious thing because we need to teach children, even as David taught Solomon and then brought him to the place. We can give children uh, any kind of best education and any kind of you know, information education, people can even sell land and sacrifice to do that. But you know that they pay little attention in teaching the children to love God. A father is to go and he's talking to his son. He's talking to a generation. He said that this is the diaco that I'm going to give you. Huh? This inheritance. He said, know the God of your father. Serve him with a pure heart and with a willing mind. If you do that, you will find him. And you know that if you find God, you find yourself. Are you hearing me? This is what David himself did. And then something now came upon him, which I'm going to describe to you now. Read it. I'm all about to score there. I don't know why time is running. Read it now, verse 19. What is there in verse 19? Are we 19 together? He said, All this. What are the all this? You remember the pattern that I gave to Solomon, and then the description description of the altar, description of the building, description of the, you know. Perfect description and perfect measurement. Huh? So that is the all this. Now, if you look at it, he did not only give David Solomon in writing, he also gave him some uh, tools, materials, right? Huh? Are you hearing me? So he joined, he said that all this, you understand it now? So look at it. All this, said David. The Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me. Even all the works of this pattern. Oh my God. We're going to stop from here tonight. But let me throw more, more light. He said all these things you are seeing. All the... What does the architect do? They write the... About the house. Plan, right? Huh? Good. So it's like David drew the, the plan. The plan of the house of God. The plan, he, drew, he drew the whole plan. And then, not only did he draw the plan, he also supplied materials. Huh? And then, this is what he's telling Solomon. He's saying that all these things you are seeing, it didn't come from the vicinitude of the flesh. Huh? He said it came when God wrote it on my heart. You are not hearing me. You didn't get it. It came when God wrote it on my heart. This pattern. He drew it. You remember when he's talking to his son about seeking God. You know, he now said that the Lord searches all heart and the imagination of the thought. Somebody say imagination. You know, that word imagination comes from the word image. You are familiar with image, right? 
the image you have over your phone, right? The image you have as pictorial form. Huh? That's imagination from the one image. That. See, you have pictures in your mind. When they say the imagination of your heart, that's the pictorial, the pictures. Huh? The pictures you snap. Those pictures, some are like pictures, some they are, they are, they are like video. Huh? You know, video is more like the motion of picture, right? And so he said the imagination of the thought. He said the Lord searches the heart, you know, searches the mind, and then the things that you are processing in your mind, and then the imagination of your thought. And then I said, if you seek him, you're going to find him, but before seek him, look at you. So listen to me. What you do that work for you is the one you present to your generation, Abi. That's what worked for David. He sought God, he found him. And look at what God began to do for him. See, in, in the battles, David went to, you know, he fought the whole lot of battle and, 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 you know, he lost none. When he seek God, concerning a battle, he opens his mind to God. He opens his heart. He opens his imagination. So, a whole lot of time, God will come and write his strategy of the battle. That this one, uh, go like this, you're going to win. Are you understanding me? And so, when he came to building the house on the temple also, it is the, the pictorial, the imaginative form of David that God came to write. Huh? And so what he wrote there, oh my God, I wish I'm going to have time to talk about David. You know, he's the one that invented harps huh? and musical instruments. Before then, you can only hear of harps in heaven. And then they have not written book of Revelation on that time. They wrote it in the New Testament. To make us understand that harps, Revelation 5, harps has been in heaven. Do you understand that? How did David that did not read did not live when they when they when they wrote the book of Revelation. How was he able to know that there's something like harp? Huh? The most high came and wrote it on his heart. And so he began to implement it. He began to call the holy app. He began to call the basilic. He said, I get a wool, carve it like this, make it all block, you know, get a string, connect it like this. Mm, the one, you know, he's he's talking, they are doing, he's talking, and then at the end, he come out there. Ah, The question is that what is written on your heart? We talk a whole lot about peace, right? Huh? And then this afternoon we began to go deeper to see how they roar, to see how they speak. You understand that? Huh? To see how they speak. And you see, at the end of, at the end of their speaking and their working, they inscribe something on your imagination. That is why you can see that kings that came to rule, to rule over nation, over territory, over family, that they did the most hideous crime. They did the most wicked, you know, and that you begin to ask that, where was that kind of wickedness coming from? Huh? Now because a beast in second heaven, you are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. He wrote it. And you see, up to now, the kind of which, the kind of wicked invention, wickedness that is coming up on a daily basis, which uh, you see on the media and so on, you know, Sometimes I ask that, where is this one coming from? There are beasts in the second heaven that are speaking and writing things. Huh? People that open their mind. People that open the, their thought. They are writing perversion. They are writing... Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you, Father. But see, we're not talking about that. I'm talking about you now. David said that the God I, I sought, he did what he came to write. Let me ask you something now. Have you ever seen the finger of Baba? Huh? Have you ever seen the finger of Baba? When he write on something, Jesus Christ. Please, Zachariah chapter 3. Zachariah chapter 3. I love this. I love this. I love this. You see, when he asks you that, what what is your what what is uh, what is God calling you to do? Say I don't know. You know what are you called? I, I don't know. And then you know as a woman you reduce your life. Then I'm you know what I'm needing is a husband. You know to marry and bring children. You know what what you are telling us is that there's nothing that is written on your heart. You are not hearing me. What you are saying there's nothing that's written. Nothing that's written. You ask a man you say you know I just want to I just want to you know get a job. I just want to you know get money and you know and then you know you know raise good beautiful children and, and you know take care of them. What you are telling us is that you see, it has no touch in eternity, huh? It's coming from the earth, 
So it means that there's nothing written on your heart. Are you hearing me? Which is Zachariah chapter 3? And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at the right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Faster. Is, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment from him. And unto he, he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass away from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I will say, let the, and I will say, let them set a fire might, a fair might upon his head. So they set a fair might upon his head, and they clothed, clothed him with garment. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Uh, that, that is verse five, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let me let me continue from verse six. You know, you just follow me with your eyes. He said, and the angel of the Lord protested, you know, to Joshua saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, if that will walk in my way. Somebody say, walk in my way. Does this suggest to you, you know, the same thing that, uh, what they call it, David is telling Solomon. Huh? He said, if that will walk in my ways, if that will keep my charge, thou shalt also judge my house. Huh? Does that suggest to you what David is telling Solomon? You know, he was going to put him on the throne to be a judge over Israel, Right? Uh, righteousness. And this is what he said. He said, that will keep my reserve work. That, that will also judge my house. And shall also keep my court. And I will give the places to walk among these ones that stand by. This place they brought Joshua the high it was in the heavenly places. It was in that, it was in that court, court section in heaven. I mean, it was in the heavenly court. Uh, are you hearing me? I was telling you about the council, right? So this was more like the council in heaven. When they brought in the council of the heaven, Satan also asked something against him. And they had to change his raiment. They had to put a new raiment on him. And you see, that it's still suggesting to us that God does not only wash you by some blood. God does not only redeem you and wash you by some blood. He also plays upon your responsibility because he asked it. Huh? When they change his cloth, change his garment, when they are true, they are saying that this is the protest that if you are going to walk in my ways and keep my child, I also give you I want to make you to judge over my heart. And then, look at another thing he said. I want to give you a place among these ones that stand by. See, it means that there were some people that were standing already in the council in heaven. Are you hearing me? Even though he was a priest on the earth, a pastor on the earth, you know, or a Jew on the earth, he was not standing in his place in the realm of the spirit. Can you see that? Can you see that you can have a functional throne? You can have a throne in the spirit that is not functional. You are not sitting on it. Because of that, you are going to deal like a slave. Because of that, priests are, are, are climbing your horse back while you are trekking. Do you know why? Because you are not sitting on your functional throne. And as we began to design that throne in the afternoon, that the throne is overlaid with the best good. Huh? That's the throne that is meant for you. Why are we crying of hunger? Why are we crying of to sodia? See, God cannot pass you through hunger and starvation and call you wilderness. Do you hear that? God cannot pass you through hunger and starvation and call it wilderness. Most of the time, it's the devil that is at this. You call it wilderness. Have you checked the Bible the last time people were in wilderness? Have you checked the Bible? 40 years in wilderness. Was there a problem food? Please help me. Was there a problem cloth? Was it shoe? Please help me. So, where did, where did you get your definition of wilderness from? You see, most of this in the call for our alignment and to and, you know and to and to the process. You understand that to check your life again, to check, to check. You see, it means that something is missing, something is not right. I know that the devil. See, <clears throat> we're saying that the beast, even though they can scare, even though they can do whatever, they are not as powerful as that. It is our disobedience that empower the beast. Huh? When we continue and persist in disalignment, disalignment and disobedience, you know the beast. Stop coming at visitation. They come for enthronement. When they take their throne, it means that that place you are calling your territory or your church or your house become their house. Are you hearing me? But see, the moment you begin to walk in the path of obedience, you're going to see that they have nowhere to stand. Huh? This is Satan that stood at his right hand because he, he was in disalignment. But the moment he was brought in alignment, 
Where was Satan again? It was an angel that was standing at his right hand. Are you hearing me, somebody? And he said, I will also give you a place. See, I don't want to stand, sit on Robert's chair and then miss my chair in the spiritual places. I don't want to be walking on physical places while I'm not walking in the heavenly court. Because things can only change here when we sit. When we say a throne, a throne is not a chair. A throne is not a crown. Are you hearing me? That's not the definition of it. A throne is not rubber chair. A throne is not the front, front car. You know, the front car in your, in your car. So that you sit here, your wife sit here. And you know, whenever, whenever anybody cross that one, you will deal with him and, and bang the Bible on him. That's not the throne. Anyone fighting over that is a big F. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Oh my God. That's, I feel like closing today. Can we just go? Because something is getting loose here. Are you hearing me, somebody? I will also give you a place among this one that stand by. Are you standing here or you are standing only here? Are you sitting there or you are sitting only here? Because the whole idea of what God wants to do goes beyond you. He's doing something to do with the nation. God is territorial, territorial in his mindset. And God is generational in his mindset. Huh? And what you don't know also, the enemy, the enemy also is territorial in his mindset and is generational. Hallelujah. And so, left on the high priest would have been gone. But because God is territorial and generational, God had to read. He had to pluck out huh, the brand from fire. Look at verse what now? Look at verse 8. Here now Joshua the high priest and thy fellow and thy fellows that sit before thee. For they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. He said, your fellow that sit. Okay, oh my God. Can you be a man or a woman that is, will be a wonder? He said, they are men wonder. They are men that people see, they wonder. The kind of thing that came, that comes out of their life. The kind of man, if men look and then they wonder. That this one, are they human being at all? You can't be like that if you, if you remain natural. You must be a supernatural person to speak and do things that men will wonder at. Sarah was Abraham's wife. Can't you see that she wondered at him? When she look at Abraham, Abraham is a man that you look and then you wonder. That's why she began to call him Lord. Huh? And that does not mean that you go and force your wife with a bet or to call you Lord when there's nothing supernatural about you. When she look at you, what does she wonder? <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no supernatural. Everything is natural. The thing that in fact even she have a better version of it. And then they want you, you know, don't you know I'm a Lord? Don't you know you Abraham? They don't just call Lord, they earn it. Huh? These are men that, that they all wonder that. Now you see, there are men that, that they are wondering because they are sitting in a place. They are sitting on their throne. They are sitting on their seat in heavenly places and then manifesting on the earth. I want to hear your amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 9 now. And he said, For behold, a stone that I have laid before Joshua. Somebody says stone. Somebody says stone. That I laid before Jesus. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. And I will engrave. Somebody say engrave. I will engrave a, a, a craving. A craving thereof, say the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Somebody say engrave. Somebody say engrave. You know that the thing that God gave Moses, you know, Moses had to call a holy abba, has to call Bezalel, and a whole lot of them, they were engraver. Huh? They were engraver, you know, in the house of the Lord. What does it mean to engrave? It means to carve. You know, I was asking you that, have you ever seen God writing? When God writes, it doesn't carry this your pen that you write and clean. Huh? When God writes, it doesn't carry the up too. You see, the last time, I feel the anointing. The last time the hand of God came in a, in a, upon somebody's throne, that hand began to write where? On the wall. You see the hand of God. There's a certain place say that the sin of Judah is written with an iron pen. You know, if you carry iron and write here, 
It cannot be erased. Huh? It will go inside. Right? And so, we are talking about the work of an engraver. Huh? The work of, you know, <laughs> I want to say something and I'm careful with it. I want to say something and I'm careful with it. I want to say something and I'm careful with it. Do you have ear to hear? Do you have ear to hear? Do you have ear to hear? Huh? What God wants to do with you, your generation, it must be engraved in your heart. Are you hearing me? Huh? Just like you engrave something on a stone, you write it on a stone, and then it is there permanently. 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 They were going to build yes, they were going to build Jerusalem. They have been in captivity for 70 years. They have come back. They were going to build it. And so there's a man that was one of the principal actors there. Huh? The high priest. And you see, for that building to come in, for the vision of the building to come in, for it to stand against hostility, to stand against you know, enemy, and not forget who he is, and not forget his assignment, he said that, I'm going to give you a stone. That stone has seven one. You can't build without eyes. Eh? But more to the eyes, I'm going to engrave. I'm going to write on it. And so David began to speak to his son Solomon. He said that this pattern I've given to you is because the great one, he engraved, he wrote, he wrote it on my heart. What is it that is, what is engraved? Huh? What is engraved or what is written on your heart? That has to do with eternity. You see men that people wonder at, they had a writing from eternity, of eternity upon their heart. Read Hebrews chapter 11. You now see that there were some that refused deliverance. Right? They choose to see. There's no way that you'll be in difficulty and then deliverance will come. And then you refuse it if nothing is written. Are you hearing me? What is it that is written? Parents wrote something with their word. They told you of the enemies of the family. When you're becoming something, your mother looked at you carefully. She saw that you're coming of age. She began to tell you that my son, you see, we and this family, we don't eat together. This is what they did to your grandfather. This is what they did to your father. And this is what they did to me. You see, those words, she's engraving something. How far have you gone with it? What's the benefit to the kingdom? Huh? Why not let the great one write something on your heart? Let them write something on your heart. If you write something on your heart, that's what you'll be thinking about. That's what you'll be imagining. Are you hearing me? That's what you'll be speaking. And that's what you'll be doing. You see, David, having fought all the wars, maybe he would have gone since. But what is it that was keeping him? God engraved something. God wrote something. Something from eternity. He wrote it on his heart. So a time came that he needed to reproduce it, to release it to a younger generation. Are you hearing me, somebody? What we say revival because people press into God. They press into God and press until they go to a point that God wrote something on their heart. Hallelujah. What is it that God has written on your heart? That you can live for it. You can die for it. There are Peter, he wrote something. And so, a time came that persecution arose. You know, Peter was married. They caught Peter's wife and they took her to the Vatican Hill and they began to crucify her. And the first soldier, the first Peter, to watch and see his wife be crucified. Hallelujah. And they do that to see the last word you are going to say. And with that last word, with that husky voice, Peter shouted to the wife. Say, my dear wife, remember Jesus. Remember him. He was not seeking for it. He said, remember Jesus. Now because he knew that, maybe because of the pain, she might be compelled to deny. He said, my wife, remember Jesus. Are you hearing me? Because there's something that is in grief. Something eternity. 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 
something kingdom kingdom that is inscribed on his heart and he did that and came to his turn and caught him and he said no I'm not running only that don't crucify me like Jesus do it upside down something kingdom something eternity written that is what they lived for that's what they lived for and when Saul when Paul would go to Jerusalem Agapus came and took bets and they said, so does it, you know, this man that has his bet, this is how he's going to be bound when he goes to Jerusalem. All the brothers begin to cry. So he said, what may you this by this cry? You mean to break and say, I'm not ready, I'm not only ready to suffer, for Christ also to die for him. That's a that Christ inscribed something. He wrote something, he wrote a pattern, a blueprint upon his heart. We have people who are empty. They are empty of the kingdom. They are empty of Christ. We are people who are living only by what they will eat and drink. We are people who are only existing on the earth but they are not living and giving that maximum impact. You can only give that maximum impact if something is written. What is written? Which, which pain? Is it a natural thing? Is it a natural word that is written on your heart? Or it is word from eternity. That cannot only come until when you seek the God of your father. You seek him with a, with a pure heart. Are you hearing me? With a pure heart. Are you seeking with the whole of your heart? You will find him and he will write something. That is when you begin to live. Before that time you were only existing. Are you hearing me? In Genesis, the Bible wrote a whole lot of people that existed. That lived many years. Even 900 and something years. Live many years. They had children. They had wives and children. And maybe houses. And then that's all. They died. What a waste. Huh? But one man came. And he began to live that life of maximum impact. That one man, he walked with God. He walked with God. He walked with God. That is the koinonia dimension of the ecclesia we're talking about. He walked with God in such a way that he wrote something. There's no way you will walk with God that you will not write something. And what God writes on your heart, it cannot be erased. No eraser can clean it. Are you hearing me? It's like with an iron pen. Because his hand is like an iron pen. When what God writes, it's like an inscriber. It's like an engraver rather. That engraved things on a stone. It cannot be erased. Are you hearing me? It cannot be erased. No suffering can erase it. No pain can erase it. No nakedness can erase it. No hunger can erase it. No joy, no prosperity can erase it. If ever you have that pain, that hand of God from eternity passing through time, wrote something on your heart, nothing can erase it. And you see, tonight, somebody should be crying that write something. How long can you continue being an empty woman? And you see, I'm talking about an empty woman. An empty woman, an empty man is a man that is filled his heart with vanity. What is vanity? Things that end here. Things that end here. Not in eternity. It means that you are vanity. You are vanity. You are a vain person. The church is filled with people. There's nothing. There's written. Whenever you find one and two, that the hand of God from eternity writes a pattern. Write this thing. See, that person now stand out. He 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 stand out. What is written on your what is written on your heart? When the sand of time passes away, will that thing still have relevance? Will your car, your house, your shoe, your cloth, your food, when the sand of time passes away, will that still be relevant? Can it can it stand the age to come? What God writes on your heart. Is what we stand in the age to come, in the world to come, that will give you result, that will give you reward. When thrones of judgment are said, your own will be thrones of reward. Somebody cried, I write something. Right. Write something. Let God write something. All this said David. The Lord made me to understand in writing. 
by his hand. By his hand. Let the hand of God write something. Write his pattern. Write his blueprint. Write his plan in your heart. You will see that understanding will begin to come. Understanding that you are not taught. Why are you a Christian and stay foolish? Why are you a Christian and then you still lack understanding? It means the hand of God has not written something. Because if the hand of God writes, it's going to compare understanding. You begin to understand supernatural things. You begin to understand natural things. You also begin to understand the earth. We're praying in the afternoon and the woman of God begin to lead us concerning the language of the earth, right? The language of the earth. The language of creation. If you understand the language of the earth, the earth is going to respond to you. Because you don't understand it, then the herbalists understand the language of the earth. You understand the language of trees. So trees respond to him. When he goes there, three 